Hey guys, welcome back to this C++ game development series where we are creating a 2D snake game using C++ and SFML. So in the last video we implemented the snake class and its movement and we also implemented random placement of food when it is written by the snake. We had also written a to do note in the update method of gameplay class to handle the collision of snake with walls. So basically we have to push the game over state on the state stack when player hits any of the walls. For this we need the game over state. So let's start by creating a new class. For this I'll use easy C++ extension. I'll name this class as game over. Since this class will be very similar to main menu state, I'll go ahead and copy all the code from main menu.hpp to game over.hpp. First I'll rename the class as game over. So our game over state will basically show a game over text and two buttons. One button will allow players to retry the game and the other one will allow to exit the game. For this I'll reuse the existing sf text object. First I'll rename m underscore game title to m underscore game over title and m underscore play button will become m underscore retry button. The last one is already called m underscore exit button. So I'll keep it as it is. Then I'll also rename m underscore play button selected and m underscore play button pressed as m underscore retry button selected and m underscore retry button pressed. Next let's rename the constructor and destructor as game over as well. And we require all the other methods so let's keep it as it is. Next I'll go to the main menu.cpp and copy the constructor definition and paste it inside gameover.cpp constructor. And again here we will have to rename main menu as game over. And similar to what we did in header, I'll rename m underscore play button selected and m underscore play button pressed with appropriate retry button selected and retry button pressed. Next let's also define all the remaining methods from main menu. So first I'll replace main menu with game over at all the places. Next inside the init method I'll start replacing m underscore game title with m underscore game over title. Also this string will now be game over instead of snake game. Next I'll replace the m underscore play button with m underscore retry button at all places in init method. And let's also change the string for this button from play to retry. So now init method is done. Now let's go to the process input method. Here it is showing an error for sf event class. So let's first include the event.hpp header. Now in the process input I'll replace all the m underscore play button selected and all the m underscore play button pressed with m underscore retry button selected and m underscore retry button pressed. This completes the process input method. Next let's make the same changes in update method 2. And here again we are getting error for gameplay class because we have not included its header. So let's do that real quick. So this works perfectly fine for us because we want to load gameplay state when retry button is pressed similar to the play button press of main menu. And at last we can change m underscore game title with m underscore game over title and m underscore play button with m underscore retry button. So now our game over state is ready and we can go to update method of gameplay and remove this to do note. We can now load the game over state here using the add method of m underscore state stored inside m underscore context. And for game over we will need the game over dot hpp here. And since we will be either pushing a new gameplay state on retry button press or we'll exit the game on exit button press, it makes sense to replace the existing gameplay state here. So for that I'll pass the second argument as true here. And now we can go to build and run this code. And to check if game over state is working correctly, I'll go and hit one of the walls. You can see that the game over state is getting displayed with retry and exit buttons. If I select and press retry, the game will start again. And if I select exit, the game will close. So that was it for this video. Now we have a functioning game over screen in our game. In the next video and hopefully the last video of this series, we will take a look at how to add pause functionality to our game. So hope to see you in the next one.